Praise the Lord. Just join with me in our pastor, Pastor William Beasley Sr. We don't own the right to this music, but we're asking you to uplift the name of the Lord with us. Blessed day, 
of the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Definitely looking forward uh, uh, this Sunday morning for a mind to assemble together and worship and uh, praise unto God. Thank, you. Uh, uh, thank him for allowing us to come before his presence to sing enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. To be thankful unto him and to bless his name. For the Lord is good. Mercy is everlasting and his peace endures to all generations. And so we just thank him in this morning for each and every one of you being present with us. We thank God from the beginning to be present with us. Thank God for you that are uh, joining us on Facebook Live and YouTube. And thank God for those that are on Zoom. We're going to uh, get into a into the lesson. We have another lesson this morning by the help of the Holy Ghost and the power of the Lord. Um, so we'll we'll pray. And then we'll get into it. The bow is be gracious to him, Father, in the precious name of Jesus. We come this morning, thank you once again for your tender mercy and your kindness. We thank you for a mind to assemble together the study of your word. You said, Lord, that but two or three would gather together in your name, that you would be in the midst. So we give honor to your presence this morning. We give honor to the Spirit of Christ being in our midst this morning. We pray that you would move. According to your will, open up our hearts and minds and give us what you would have us to study for him this morning. And we, as we are uh, awaiting your appearing, we know that you are soon to come and we want to be ready without spot or wrinkle or any such thing. So we praise you and glorify you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Coming out of 1 John, we slid on down to 1 John. Third chapter and uh, the 16th verse. First John, third chapter and the 16th verse. First John. First John, uh, third chapter and 16th verse. Uh, I'll be reading from the King James Version this morning. And you can follow whatever translation that you use. Scriptures will be up on the screen if you can see them for your the convenience. Uh, 1 John 3.16, and it reads, Hereby perceive we the love of God, because he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brothers. Uh, read it again. Hereby perceive we the love of God because he laid down his life for us and we ought to lay down our lives for the brother. Our thought this morning is hereby perceive we the love of God. Hereby perceive we the love of God. We want to understand that. We want to understand what the love of God is. And uh, John is letting his readers know how we can perceive the love of God. And that word perceive suggests to us to understand discern, to know, to see clearly, become aware or conscious of something, come to realize, distinguish, or identity. And so, uh, identify, I'm sorry, identify, not mm -hmm. identity, but to identify. Perceive. That is that is perceived. It is to understand, 
we would probably lean heavily on that to understand or to distinguish or to identify, mm -hmm. to know, to see clearly. And so, like I said, the in the in the early church, in the early early churches, John uh, himself fought uh, or contested against uh, Gnosticism, false false teaching, false doctrine. <laughs> and so, just as the Bible said there was uh, false teachers, or false crises, or antichrists in those days, mm -hmm. and so it is in, in this day today. And we have to understand, and we have to know, as John was letting the writer know, uh, what is the love of God? There, there are so many false doctrines and so many false teachings that would try to express to you the love of God. And uh, it, is, it is incorrect. <laughs> the, uh, the love of God, he said, laid down his life for us. Mm -hmm. And we ought to lay down our lives for the brother. As a born again believer, as the members of the body of Christ, there is nothing more important to you and I than the love of our brother and sister mm -hmm. at this point. Mm -hmm. Nothing. And John is trying to get the believer to understand and to perceive the love of God, to see clearly what the love of God is, to distinguish and to identify what the love of God is. He said, because as God laid down his life for us, we have to lay down our lives for the brother. Clearly, clearly we must see and understand. Now it's interesting that John says that uh, the love of God because he laid down his life for us. That's interesting. But that is a point that is worthy, that is noteworthy. You have to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. <clears throat> Hereby perceive we the love of God. Hereby we understand, hereby we identify or distinguish the love of God because he laid down his life for us. God laid down his life for us. Some of us probably won't get that because it's spiritually discerned. It's spiritually understood. But uh, we understand that that Jesus died. Yeah. Jesus died. So if you understand Jesus died, then you understand what the scripture is saying. Mm -hmm. But that's not what we're dealing with this morning. That's for another lesson. This morning, we are trying to, um, this morning, uh, in, in order to be prepared for the Lord's return, we are trying to understand or identify, distinguish what the love of God is. Mm -hmm. Now, with that con with that concept or that the perception, it makes uh, it makes Cain and Abel very clear. Like I say, we you can always refer back to creation because the Bible said in the process of time, they both came and offered. Sacrifice unto God. <clears throat> Cain offered unto God vegetation or fruits of his labor. Unacceptable. Unacceptable. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the two. Abel, Abel offered up the first leaf and the fat. There of, of the flock, the life. Mm -hmm. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Hereby perceive 
you the love of God. Hereby identify. Hereby understand the love of God. Because he laid down his life for us. We ought to lay down our life for the brother. Cain's offering or sacrifice was not accepted because it was not the life. God wanted the life. He didn't want his but he didn't want the fruit of his labor. He didn't want the work, his works. Mm -hmm. oh, man. You and I, you and I will never be saved by our works. We have to understand, we have to learn and understand that. Now is the time where the Father is looking for true worshipers. Mm -hmm. And the true worshiper will worship him in spirit and in truth. In order to know, or in order to understand the love of God, you have to offer up the life. That's what we're dealing with this morning. And in order to, <laughs> it's not funny, but in order to understand if you are still setting up under false teaching, pay attention. Because if you're setting up under false teaching, the Bible, uh, John, John declared that the Antichrist went out with them a long time ago. And so we we have we must be aware of the false teachers and the false prophets that are existing today, which is speaking into our hearing, and a lot of us are being bewitched by it because it sounds good to the flesh. It tickles our ears. <clears throat> but we have to we John said, hereby perceive the love of God, hereby understand or identify the love of God. The Bible said God is not tempted with evil, nor does he tempt any man with evil. Mm -hmm. So when you and I are tempted with evil or by evil, you, you are not being tempted by God. You're being tempted by Satan, the enemy. Also, when you are being, when you are being taught to, to perceive or to understand uh, or when you're being taught to may believe that your your salvation or your uh, your deliverance came by corruptible things mm -hmm. such as silver and gold no, that's a false doctrine that's a false teaching your life your salvation, your deliverance and mine came by the fact that God laid down his life. Amen. The grace of God. Yes. He laid down his life. Mm -hmm. Hear what the Spirit is saying. Hereby perceive ye the love of God. This is how you know the love of God. It, it is not in a bank account. Mm -hmm. It is not in the car you drive. Mm -hmm. It is not in, in, in the, the geographical uh, okay. uh, address mm -hmm. or what side of town or whatever. None of that. Amen. This is the lesson that we're dealing with. This is the lesson we're dealing with. It is time for the body of Christ to know the love of God. If we know the love of God, then we can uh, mimic the love of God because it is required of us. It is required. We dealt with that in the, the couple of lessons prior. He said, the, uh, he told Israel, listen, take heed. The Lord your God is one Lord, and, and, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, mind, soul, and strength, and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Mm -hmm. He said, this is the old commandment, this is not a new commandment. So we have to understand, and we have to perceive what the love of God is, because it is commanded upon you and I. Mm -hmm. It is commanded. We cannot say we love God when we can't see and hate our brother or sister who we see every day. Amen. We want to be ready when the Lord comes. We're not going to be ready trying to buy up all the Cadillacs. <laughs> <laughs> if the Cadillac gets you, that has nothing to do with your salvation. Amen. The Gospel of John 3.16, very familiar passage of Scripture. Let's get into the letter. The Gospel of John 3.16. Very familiar passage of scripture. We can probably quote it by heart. Everybody that carries a Bible can probably quote it by heart. 
It says, for, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Mm -hmm. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Mm -hmm. we, we are talking about how to identify and how to distinguish mm -hmm. or how to perceive the love of God. Yes. And it is understood, it is distinguished or identified in the uh, the giving of oneself, the, <coughs> the atoning aspect. It says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He sacrificed his only begotten son because he so loved the world. Yes. Because he so loved the world. That's you and I. Not the world's system. Although he created it, but uh, man has corrupted Mm -hmm. Corrupted it. Yes, he did. And the Lord, in his creation, and the Lord made everything that he created, he said it was good. Mm -hmm. It was good. It was good. The Lord said, let there be this, let there be that. It was good. But after the fall in the garden, sin entered into the world. We were spiritually separated from God, put, put out of the presence of God, God his, uh, his uh, presence. And the world became desperately and deceitful and, and just wicked continuously after that. Mm -hmm. Up until now. Up, even, even up until now. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> what God did was promise uh, a Messiah. He promised that yeah, he was sent a Messiah to, to deliver us mm -hmm. back and to reconcile us yes, back into his grace, his presence, spiritually. This is why it's so important that we receive the Holy Ghost. Because if, if you if you don't uh, receive the, the baptism of the Holy Ghost, then once again go back to creation. You you would just you would be just like Adam. He formed Adam from the dust. Mm -hmm. And Adam was a man. But Adam was not a living soul until he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. Mm -hmm. You have to hear what the Spirit is saying to you, church. And when, when Adam and Eve fell in the garden, they were separated from God spiritually. He still lived as a natural man, 900 some years, 31 years. But that was without, or that was without the presence of God dwelling in him. You and I are trying to get back to that place. This is why it requires the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Perceive we the love of God. This is how we identify the love of God. He, he loved us, so he sacrificed his life. His life is Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Jesus is his life. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. You have to hear what the Spirit has said to the church. He's trying to show you and I his love. Mm -hmm. And once that we perceive or understand or identify his love, then we have to walk there in. We cannot walk otherwise. We cannot be like Cain and, and try to sacrifice and offer God the fruit of our labor. He don't want that. No. We have to wake up. Mm -hmm. We have to wake up. You're not going to tell God that you saved because you repeated after the preacher. <laughs> You're not going to. Come on. That's not. You ain't never read that in your Bible. No. But anyway, we're going to get off of that. John. Slide down to the 13th chapter, verse 35. John 13 and 35 says, By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if ye have love one to another. Mm -hmm. Hereby perceive the love of God. Hereby identify or distinguish the love of God. He said, By this 
said, all men know who you are, my disciple. If you want to know if you are a disciple of God, a disciple is simply a follower. Yes. You want to know if you are a follower of God? He said, if you have love one to another, not if, not if you drive a Rolls Royce or a limousine. Those are false teachers. Those are false prophets. The Bible declares, what does it profit a man mm -hmm. if he gain his whole world and lose his soul? Or what can a man give in exchange for his soul? Mm -hmm. he, he, he said, by this, in other words, uh, hereby proceed. Shall mm -hmm. all men know that ye are my disciple or you are my follower, if ye have love one to another. <clears throat> Now, and I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to speak the truth and, and, and shame the devil. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a lot of us get up and testify of what God has done and testify loud and proud. And uh, but he said, by this shall all men know that ye are my disciples. If you have love one to another, wow. check your testimony now. Does it express the love for one another? Mm -hmm. Does it does it express the love of God for you? Or does it just glorify you in some carnal or natural heat? Oh, wow. That is that is that is not how we proceed. The love of God, that is not how we identify and know the love of God. We know, we, we understand and perceive God by the love, by the love. And as a born again believer, there is <coughs> our first love should be the love of God. Amen. And the second one, he said, is like likened to it, is loving one another. Mm -hmm. Because the Lord has formed the body as he sees fit. Amen. He created, scripture said he created Adam in his image and in his likeness. So if God has formed the body of Christ, which is the church, it is his it is his desire to form it in his image and his likeness. Mm -hmm. How do you know? Because the scripture says that we are to be conformed to the image of his son. Yes. The members of the body of Christ the church should not have no other likeness or no other image. Amen. And if we do, where did, where whose image and whose likeness is it? Think about, think about it. We want to be ready when the Lord comes. Amen. A lot of us are being bewitched. A lot of us are being deceived. But when the Lord comes, we can, he is, he is not accepting our Cain offering, sacrifice. We're not going to offer him the fruit of our labor. That's, what is that? It's not going to happen. John 15 and 13 says this, Greater love has no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friend. There it is once, there it is once again. Hereby perceive we the love of God. If you want to identify the love of God, if you want to understand, if you want to know, if you want to see clearly the word, the, the, the love of God, he said, greater love has no man than this, that a man lay down his life for a friend. God is only accepting the, the sacrificial, the atoning love, sacrificial love that gives of oneself. He said, if any man will come after you, let him deny himself, take up his cross, yes. Follow after me, period. Anything opposite of that, uh, I don't know who you follow. Amen. I'm not going to put anything on you, but I don't know who you follow. But if you follow,
following uh, Christ, then you, you're going to deny yourself because perceive be the love of God. Identify the love of God. He gave himself. He said it, He said in, in the word that if we try to save our lives, we lose it. He said, but if we lose our life for his sake and the God's sake, he said, then we're gained. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Yet still, we strive hard to save our life, or to preserve, or to uh, to glory, to glory in our life. Look, look what I've accomplished. Look what I've achieved. And then we try to associate that with salvation. No, that's false. You and I cannot offer God the fruit of our labor. Yeah. That, no. We have to hear what the Spirit is saying. We have to identify the love of God. And after we identify the love of God, we have to walk in it. Mm -hmm. Because that is the greatest commandment. All right, now let's go to some saints. <laughs> let's get there. Let's go to the members of the body of Christ. Let's go to some saints. Romans. Romans 5 and 8. Romans 5 and 8. It says, But God commended his love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Now that word commended means he demonstrated. Now, hereby perceive we <coughs> the love of God. God commended, commended, or God demonstrated his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. We are trying to perceive, but we're trying to identify the love of God. God did not, uh, God did not wait until we were perfect. <laughs> Before he died, yeah. before he sacrificed his life, Jesus Christ. Right. A lot of times we wait to, we try to make people change before we do things or whatever. Yeah. Right. And God said, and, 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 and God said, proceed, we the love of God. <laughs> proceed means what? Identify. Mm -hmm. Understand, distinguish, see clearly. Yeah. Now, what did he say? He commended his love. He demonstrated mm -hmm. his love. While yet we was sinners, Christ died. So, we are to demonstrate love mm -hmm. to those uh, who are not yet born again. We are to demonstrate love. Demonstrate love. We are to show love. When when uh, we have interactions with them, the Bible <coughs> declares for you and I that that our speech should always be seasoned with grace. Mm -hmm. So demonstrate love. Commend love. We're supposed to demonstrate love. He did it when we were sinners. Mm -hmm. So. Hereby perceive we the love of God. Now that we understand the love of God, now that we identify the love of God, our life is supposed to be that of an atoning sacrifice life. Uh, Paul also told the Romans to present your bodies a uh, living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Hear what the Spirit is saying. Perceive we the love of God. When we interact with people, we're supposed to interact through the love, through the love of God, through the love of Christ. We don't, what do you mean? Well, we don't render evil to people. Yeah. Just because they did evil to us, we don't in return do evil to them. That's not demonstrating the love of God. I ain't gonna say if they smite you on cheek, turn up. <laughs> I ain't gonna say that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's what the word says. 
He said, if they smite you with one cheek, turn the other cheek. Demonstrate. Hereby perceive we the love of God. Hereby understand or, or identify the love of God. Mm-hmm. You don't, you don't smite them back on their cheek. That's not the love of God. Mm-hmm. And there's there's no you, you are not gonna be able to justify that. No way. Not unto not unto to God. Why? Because He has commended His love. He has demonstrated His love. Yes, He has. He's not asking you and I to do anything that he hasn't done. Right. Right. They, 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 they spit on him. Mm-hmm. They, they smote his faith. They mm-hmm. stuck a crown of thorns mm-hmm. in his head. Mm-hmm. They, they beat him. Mm-hmm. He's not asking you and I to do mm-hmm. anything he hasn't done. He's asking you and I to commend the love of God, to demonstrate the love of God. All right, moving on. Romans 13, 9. Romans 13, 9. For this thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, thou shalt not covet. And if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying. Namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Hereby proceed we the love of God. Mm-hmm. This is to the saints in Rome. Hereby proceed we the love of God. Hereby identify, understand, or discern the love of God. He said, thou shalt not commit adultery. So some of us believe that in our act of adultery, that was the will of God. Some of us believe that. Because I've heard it said before that that was the will of God. Because the one spouse wasn't right. This one is the right. I'm telling you what I've heard before. This is why it's written in the, in the Word of God because they were they were uh, committing adultery, and they were divorcing people for whatever reason, and so. But you have to understand, God is not tempted with evil, yeah. mm-hmm. nor does He tempt man with evil. Mm-hmm. And when He says, "Thou shalt not commit adultery," mm-hmm. He means it. He said, "Thou shalt not kill." We know. Uh, one of our favorite kings killed the man. Mm-hmm. Killed the man. Uh, thou shalt not steal. Mm-hmm. Thou shalt not bear false witnesses. Mm-hmm. And, and and this is <laughs> this is one of the ones the body of Christ struggles with because uh, if you're struggling with struggles with it too. In our humanity, we struggle with it. Yeah. Thou shalt not covet. Mm-hmm. We struggle with covetousness. And the sad part about it is our false bishops and preachers and teachers, they try to teach you that in a smooth way. And they have you covered with mm-hmm. things that you have no business covered. Yeah. First of all, the word of God said, having food and raiment, right. there would be intense. That's that's the truth. All right. Now, for me to stand up here and tell you to strive to be a billionaire, a millionaire, or whatever, no, I'm going to teach you. You see, they got this. You should have that too. That's covetousness. No, that's that's false doctrine. That's you ought to turn you ought to turn that off. You ought to turn them off. <laughs> you, in, order, in order for you and I <clears throat> to be pleasing or acceptable to God, we have to be content in Christ. Right. He said, seek ye first the kingdom of God yes. and his righteousness. Mm-hmm. And all these other things he said will be added unto you. He never encouraged you not to, to cut. Never. Mm-hmm. And so we yeah. Understand the thought this morning is perceive we love God. 
We're trying to understand or identify the love of God. And he said, and if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended. Amen. And this saying, comprehended is mm -hmm. understanding. Mm -hmm. Perceive we the love of God. Understand the love of God. Namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. That's it. If we do that, like the Lord of God uh, teaches us to do, then you can you can best believe God will not allow us to go without. Amen. He will not allow us to go without. Because uh, Paul said, my God will supply all of my needs according to his riches in glory. Hear what the Spirit said to the church. You can't run around here being a covetous person. Yeah, anyway, uh, 2 Corinthians, you're dealing with the saints. 2 Corinthians 5, 14. It says, for the love of Christ constraineth us, because we thus judge that if one died for all, then we're all dead. The love of God constraineth us. That word constraint is compels. Mm -hmm. Compels. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. The love of Christ yes. drives us. The, mm -hmm. the love of Christ uh, <coughs> obliges us. The love of Christ forces us. The love of Christ drives us because mm -hmm. we thus Judge that if one died for all, then we're all dead. Yes. It's the love of Christ that uh, constrains us. It's the love of Christ that compels us. Hereby perceive we the love of God. Yes. It's the love of Christ that drives us. Mm -hmm. It's the love of Christ. Not any, not, you and I were not redeemed it. Any, uh, corruptible thing. No. That is that should not drive me. All right. Corruptible, corruptible things. In other words, any anything that is uh, carnal or earthly or material, because all that stuff is going to be destroyed in this urban heat mm -hmm. when that day comes. And there's nothing in this life on this earth Amen. translating to Amen. eternal life or to heaven. <laughs> nothing. But the spirit. Nothing but the spirit. Your body and my body is not in vain. Yeah. It's going to be changed to a celestial body, yeah. to an eternal body. Yeah. Hear what the spirit is saying to the church. Perceive we the love of God. Galatians 2 and 20. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Hereby I perceive you the love of God. Because he laid down his life for us, we ought to lay down our life for the brothers. He said, the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God. Mm -hmm. The life which I live in the flesh. This is uh, Paul to the Galatians. The Galatians, mm -hmm. the Galatian church, just like you and I have been born again. Mm -hmm. So the life that we now live in the flesh, uh, Paul said it like this, <laughs> if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Yes. He says, old things are passed Absolutely. away, and behold, all things have become new. So, the life that I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. This is how we perceive, this is how we identify the love of God. The love of God is not identified in 
the abundance of things that we possess. Stop being fooled. The love of God is perceived or identified or distinguished by our love one toward another. And the fact that uh, we we have to give of ourselves. Now, we don't die like Jesus died. But the scripture says we have to consider our brother. Or we have to consider uh, the things of others right. rather than or, or before the things of, of ourselves. We have to, he said that we, if our brother or sister is destitute of this worldly goods or needs or whatever, and we have it, and we shut up the vows of our compassion and, and not give it to them. He said, how well is the love of the Father in you? Mm -hmm. That's, that is <coughs> the faith. That is the one thing. That is the faith. That is the love of God. And if we don't have that, then we have to get uh, this, we have to yet attain to the love of God. We have to. Because when the Lord returns, like you say, we're not going to be able to offer him no vegetation, no fruit. Oh, this is what I'm offering. <laughs> and, 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 and it's not going to work. Because he don't want that. He wants the life. Yeah. He, wants, he wants your life. You have to hear what the Spirit is saying. He gave his, so you and I will have to give ours. Right. This is uh, this is why repentance is so important because repentance is death. Mm -hmm. Repentance symbolizes dying to self, death. This is why we preach the gospel, the death, burial, and resurrection. Repentance symbolizing dying to yourself. Mm -hmm. The burial symbolizes the baptism being buried in Christ's baptism. And the resurrection symbolizes the, the quickening or the awakening of the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. Just how he was, uh, the Bible said he, he was raised from the dead by the Father, mm -hmm. by the Spirit. Right. This is why we preach the gospel. This is why you and I must be born again of the water and the Spirit, because that is the gospel. We have, we, we, there's no way Excuse me, you and I can be saved and not repent. Oof. Ephesians 5 and 2 and also 25. Ephesians 5 and 2 says, And walk in love as Christ also has loved us and has Given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling Savior. This is what the Lord has accepted. Mm. It, this is the Cain and Abel situation. This is why Abel was a type of Christ mm -hmm. because of the atoning sacrifice. That's what the Lord accepts. That's what he's always accepted. If Adam and Eve would have just uh, <clears throat> obeyed God and, and would have offered up the sacrifice that he uh, required of them to not eat of the, mint, the tree in the midst of the garden, they couldn't even remember that as a sacrifice. He said, you have all the trees, all the other trees that's in the garden, you, uh, you can freely eat of them. He said, but of the the trees in the midst of God, the tree of life and the tree of knowledge, good and evil. So don't, don't, don't eat it. And they couldn't, and they could, <laughs> and they couldn't give it up. They couldn't all, they couldn't, they couldn't do it. And so <laughs> Ephesians 5 and 2 says, and walk in love as Christ also loved us. Mm -hmm. And walk in love. And walk in love. Walk in this. This is instruction to the body of Christ. Walk in love. Walk in love. Mm -hmm. He said, present your body to live in sacrifice. Walk in love. Walk 
in considering one another. Mm -hmm. Walk in considering others before yourself. Walk in love. Mm -hmm. As Christ also loved us and has given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smell of Satan. This is what this is the sweet smelling Savior to God. God, the Lord got tired of uh, sacrificing, they sacrificing the bulls and goats. He said they become a stench after a while because they were just killing animals for nothing. Mm -hmm. no, no, no remorse, no repentance. Mm -hmm. They just killing them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hear what the Spirit said to the church. <laughs> they just killing them. He said they they they, they, they killing they sacrificing the animals, but they not changing. No. He's killing them. Hear what the Spirit said to the church. He mm -hmm. said he got tired of that stench, that stench, mm -hmm. killing them and the animals, and you not even desire to change your life. Mm -hmm. He said, "But walk in love as Christ also." Loved us and given himself an offering, sacrifice unto God. In verses, in verse uh, Ephesians 5 and 25, it says, Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. Now, when you read, when you read this in its totality, it says that I speak uh, a great mystery. He said he's referring to Christ and the church. I know a lot of times we use this in with husband and wife, and that's fine. But husband and wife is to mimic the uh, the love Christ has for the church. Right. And so he said, husbands mm -hmm. love your wives. Even as Christ also loved the church, it's a, it's a mirror effect. Mm -hmm. How Christ gave Himself for the church, the husband is to give himself for the wife. And uh, and the wife is supposed to see that she reverent or respect mm -hmm. her husband. Amen. Hereby proceed with the love of God. Now, I don't know where any of the other stuff comes from. <laughs> I, I don't know where any of the other stuff comes from, but the, the scripture is clear. Husbands, love your wives. Love is the giving of yourself. Right. The giving of yourself. I know we. I know. I know. If I, I know that some wives gonna gonna, gonna run around <laughs> the block and come home with with some flowers. No. I don't mean you love them, no. but I don't know where we get this stuff from. <laughs> but we but we try to we try to live by it instead of living by what the scriptures say. They say husbands <laughs> love your wife. Be careful by flowers. <laughs> and uh. <laughs> Even as Christ loved the church. But we have accepted <laughs> this carnal, this worldly perception or conception or understanding of what love is. And so, uh, you know, <laughs> love, love is, love is kind. <clears throat> love is patient. Love believes all things. Love suffers all things, endures all things. Love seeketh not its own. Mm -hmm. This is this is love. This is love. Not 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 necessarily something shiny to excuse the fact that I'm I, I don't love I don't I'm not I don't love you. Mm -hmm. But this is what this is the type of stuff we go for because uh, you know. And then the Lord tells the wife to respect mm -hmm. her husband. Amen. Woo! So we're not even going to deal with that. <laughs> <'Cause> we, <laughs> we're not even 
not even gonna deal with we're not even gonna deal with that because that's not really what the lesson is about. Okay? <laughs> so no, we're not gonna deal with that. But <laughs> the point is this: hereby perceive we the love of God. Hereby identify and understand the love of God. And if we're not doing what if we're not doing it according to what the word says, not according to what the world says. If I, if, if I don't love my wife according to what the word says, not the world, I'm not bound to, to the flesh. I'm not bound to the world. Mm -hmm. I'm bound to Christ. Mm -hmm. And so we have to stop confusing this stuff. Mm -hmm. Because once again, we cannot offer God the fruit of our labor. You not, as a husband, I'm not going to bring my uh, wife flowers and keep committing adultery. No, okay. That's not, I, I love our father. No, no, that God, no, no. We have, to, we have to understand the love of God. The love of God is giving of yourself. Mm. The love of God is repentance, is dying to self. Mm -hmm. And so as it is always, we're going to be cutting right there. <laughs> As it is always, uh, we encourage you to repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sin. And allow the Lord to fill you with the Holy Ghost, according yeah. to Acts 2 and 38. And um, we pray that you receive something from the Word of God. We pray that you baptize us and we'll also continue to bless you according to His Word and that we will see you when we unite. Bow here to give you up. Your grace is heavenly Father, in your precious name, Jesus. We come tonight thanking you once again for your tender mercy and your kindness. We thank you for the word that we have heard. We thank you for supper with us this morning, Lord God. We thank you for the comfort of your spirit, Lord, which dwells in our hearts and minds. We pray that you will take it from this place, never from your presence. Assemble us again together at the appointed time. We will praise you, Lord, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.